So we're here in uh, Shenzhen here with the Libra computer and these are all the boards that you have right now on, uh, on the market, right? Yes, currently we've done uh, three Kickstarters to basically uh, create these development boards uh, using off-the-shelf chips that are available on the market. Yeah. So we currently have um, three solutions. The first solution is the MLogic S905X and then this board um, we basically upstream uh, a lot of silicone support uh, in mainline Linux and U-Boot uh, with our partners in Bay Libre uh, so that people can sort of use these as Linux IoT devices or edge computing devices. And then these... So you upstream, you, you get all the Linux stuff up there? Yeah, so... What did you, up, what did you upstream, for example? So, for example, um, just in terms of the device tree and various drivers for uh, HDMI, USB, and Ethernet, and there's a lot of also community members who uh, provided support for various drivers on, on this uh, SOC, including like the Ethernet Phi, uh, like USB and USB OTG, uh, all the GPIO, like SPI, and then all the functionality on the board uh, that previously wasn't exposed. So vendors usually have a BSP, and they are um, based on a really old version of Linux, which is not suitable for a lot of applications, especially in today where security is uh, sensitive and people need to keep uh, as close to upstream as possible. Um, so we sort of uh, help the community or have the community, it's both ways. So we help the community and the community helps us uh, upstream support for these boards and provide a sort of development solution on these chip technologies that are available. How much is that one for sale for? So this one is for sale for $35 for the 1G and then it's uh, for the 2G is $45 on the US market. Uh, is, so people can just buy it on the Libra.computer? Uh, yes, we have uh, distributors and then you can also buy these on Amazon. They're readily available along with various different accessories. And, uh, so, so since when is, uh, so which one was the first one you did? Uh, this, th this was our first Kickstarter which raised about $60,000. Uh, we did a second Kickstarter for this one uh, which gained about $20,000 but it was a quick short kick uh, Indiegogo campaign. And then we have the all winner solution here. So this is based on Rockchip. So Rockchip 3228. This has DDR4, which is really expensive nowadays. Um, and but it's really fast, and it has USB 3.0 and gigabit Ethernet and two USB ports. Uh, and so this one is just a bunch of uh, USB 2. Yeah. So this is USB 2 with uh, 100 four megabit. Yes, four U four USB. But there's only two channels. One is distributed. Three of the USB ports share a hub chip, because there's only two USB Okay. hosts on this and then these are all four these two are both 4k 60 boards capable of doing like vp9 uh h265 and h264 decode as well as this one can do dual dual 720p encodes so they're used for for a lot of different new applications involving um um sort of video and then you can you can hook up like a uvc camera that works with uh mainline linux and basically have a uh, IP video solution uh, using these boards. What and then, kind of Linux can people run on these? You can run, so so we've since we upstreamed support in mainline Linux, you can run Debian, you can run Ubuntu, you can package it up with any sort of distribution that Fedora. uses Linux. Yes, you can use it with pretty much any solution. There's not really any limit. Do but people have like uh, preferences with the smaller, more compact kind of Linux as well sometimes? Uh, uh, you can run smoother, or you can do build roots. You can do Yocto uh, on this board. We haven't done Yocto on this board yet, but uh, Rockchip has done a lot of support um, for for this for this specific board on the upstream portion of like the open source projects. So there's good Linux on that one. Yes. So these are all based on good upstream software support uh, SOCs. Um, they they basically can all run mainline uh, ex with the exception of probably the video decoder. So 3D, Wayland, uh, the whole nine yards. As long as ARM recently released the uh, Utgard libraries uh, for Hikey, which can be used with these. Is that Mali GPU drivers? Yes, so they can be used with uh, upstream kernel with a few patches. Nice, um, so that means any Mali device? Not just these, but any Mali device has okay Linux support with the Mali stuff? Yeah, so the recently released Mali uh, 7 library, uh, 7.0, uh, 
uh, for high key, they have a license that allows you to distribute that binary with any ARM board. And then these are based on the Mali 450s. And the 450s are the Utkar generation. And then these will support, uh, these are supported by that binary. So you just need a couple of hooks into the mainline Linux, uh, patches onto mainline Linux to drive these like for Wayland or some other uh, application. What are like, you doing in here? So this is based on the Raspberry Pi form factor. So you have all the UARTs, GPIO, S, uh, SPI, and other functionality on here. Uh, it includes some I, I2S functionality. So this board actually has additional I2S uh, pins as well as UART. Um, over, UART. This is, has ADC. So this is almost standard with Raspberry Pi. You can pretty much use uh, most hats. So unlike some other board vendors, we do p as close to pin to pin as possible. Uh, for the alternate functionality on the so same, same place is it so Raspberry Pi kind of design or what do you say? Yeah, what so this, this, form form, uh, this form factor is entirely based on the Raspberry Pi form factor because uh, One of our partners has designed numerous products for Raspberry Pi family and we want to reuse all that uh, Work that's been put into this form factor by the both by the community and by Raspberry Pi Foundation So what what products for example uh, like cases uh, various hats, uh, uh, like storage device, like additional storage devices, audio devices that go on the hat. Um, Is it easy to power one of these uh, off a uh, power bank? Uh, yes. So this one's especially low power because uh, the chip used by is S905X, which is used by a lot of TV boxes. And uh, in Shenzhen, they have been building the TV boxes for uh, ultra low cost, which means that the power uh, supplies need to be extremely uh, like sort of efficient and low power and then th at idle this thing uh, if you don't have video on will use less than about 130 milliamps at 5 volts which means it can consume extremely low amounts of power for a quad core so, A53. So you can use a 1A power bank like any power bank. Yeah pretty much. Just plug it into there the micro, micro USB that's the charge. Yeah at full load uh, right this Yes, at full load running like a synthetic benchmark, this board will consume less than four watts. Um, and then this one's slightly more power hungry, but it's not that power hungry. What it brings to the table is super fast USB 3. So this can actually achieve near um, near the bandwidth limit of USB 3. Is it gigabit? Uh, yeah, along gigabit. with gigabit. And how about uh, the price on that one? Uh, this one is $40 for the one gig. So this is 35, this is 40. The the video codec support on this one is slightly better than the rock chip, but the rock chip is steadily improving. And um, so both of these solutions, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for like a really low power solution, go with this one. If you're looking for a higher end, like say USB NAS solution, you would go with this one. And you said, uh, 40 for for one gigabyte. For one gig, how about you have two? Two gigs is uh, fifty dollars, and then four gigs is eighty dollars. Right now, the limitation is the DDR4 that's being used. So one of these chips alone costs nearly ten dollars, ten US dollars. Oh, yeah. um, so if you put four gigs, your RAM is around forty dollars already. That's not including the rest of the manufacturing. That's why costs. Samsung made such great quarterly results recently. And, yes. Uh, I guess this this is another one, the Sky Sky. Uh, this Hynix. is the. SK Hynix. Yeah, so we're, these are all using top of the line memory. So, uh, whereas other vendors use lower speed memory, we use the highest available uh, memory. So, this one is actually running at 2133. This one's running at 2133 DDR4. Um, whereas other vendors will use 1866 DDR. Um, nice. So, we don't cut, on, cut down quality in terms of our board. So, like if you compare other boards, the manufacturing, the PCB manufacturing, they use very low quality PCBs. Yeah. Um, we use basically the highest the highest quality components available. Uh, so, so how about the, there's a micro micro SD card slot right here, which you can put 256 or yeah. So micro 400? yeah micro SD card is sort of standard. You can support any micro SD card size that's on the market. Um, uh, there's a lot of issues. People don't understand the difference between FAT32 and XFAT, and XFATs aren't supported. Uh, uh, or XFAT is needed for th over 32 gigabytes, but uh, you would flash the images onto here, and these will support any. What's that chip there? This is DDR as well. So, so more DDR. Yeah. So you have Raspberry Pi, which uses LPDDR, which is one chip for the entire board. 
uh, we use standard DDR, which is faster than LP DDR for in most uh, in most situations. Um, so and basically, it's much better than the Raspberry Pi, right? Yeah. So performance-wise, uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Raspberry Pi is also good, very good. They spend a lot of effort uh, optimizing the cost structure of that, but it's still using uh, LP DDR2, which is much slower, and then still using 40 nanometer process for the chips. So the power consumption, especially on the Raspberry Pi B Plus, is much higher than these boards by factors of 50 on top of this board and by a factor of three on this board. So it'll a Raspberry Pi 3 will use like like around two amps at full load. This one will use like point, uh, uh, like I said, point 0.7 at full load. Uh, this one will run at like one amp-ish. So one there's- amp -ish. So it's better to have a two A power bank for that one. Yes. Uh, how about the- um, so micro, S, uh, micro USB can only support, like it was designed to support 1.8 amps. When you're running more than 1.8 amps, you run into voltage issues like you get with the Asus Tinkerboard or the Raspberry Pi 3. You know, like everybody sources special power supplies. Um, but with these, you can use front of the mill power supplies like your phone charger and you won't have any issues uh, with power supply stability. Only when you use like cheap, like super cheap, uh, like uh, $2 power supplies, that come from, I uh, hate to say it, China, but like that you order off. We're in China. I don't know. Yeah. That you order off. China's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that you order off AliExpress, uh, yeah. where they they it's basically you know 250 milliamps, and they mark it as two 2.5 amps. Uh, those power supplies will not work um, for obvious reasons. But uh, stability-wise, you can pretty much use any r reliable power supply from any vendor, like including your cell phone chargers. Uh, from any phone in the last three years uh, or five years. When you buy one of these, do you get the charger with it? No. no. So, so these you are just ju use any charger you want. You have. How about the, this? Is quite powerful. It's a quad core A17. Uh, um, uh, like a, kind of a power. Uh, it's, a, it's not a small. Ch it's not a small performance. It's a, so this it's, is. It's quite a lot higher than the A53, right? Uh, this is actually A5. Both of uh, both ah, of these. Both A53. Yeah. yeah, so these uh, are the RK3328. We're not using uh, out of order because out of order just consumes way too much power for this form factor. You're going to run into yeah. heat issues if you put this in a if you put a A17 in a case. Like in Asus Tinkerboard. I mixed up the 3288. That's another Yeah, 3288 yeah. is uh, the 3328. Yes, correct. And then um, so you have 4K under 5 watts in 90 99% of use cases. So these are extremely powerful boards. And then here we have um, the latest Kickstarter. So these haven't been nailed out to Kickstarters. They were just finished manufacturing this week, actually. Um, these are based on all winner solution. The community for all winner, the open source community for all winner is really healthy. Uh, it's by Linux Sunsea. So they have people all over Europe, all over uh, the world sort of working on upstream support for these. And then Armbian has been especially uh, good in bringing support for these boards when the vendor are not bringing support. What's the Armbian? Armbian is basically, uh, basically they package up Ubuntu and Debian for ARM-based boards. And they basically do the work that uh, board vendors will not. And make it easy for Who easy user. Just easy. some open, open community? Yeah, they're, so they're by a couple people in Europe um, mostly and a couple people in the United States. And then they do great work bringing uh, ease of use to ARM boards. Are these A53s too? Uh, different amounts of cores or what's going on here? So, so we have uh, three versions. So this is the most expensive version with two gigabytes with uh, all-winner H5. Is that an yeah. octa-core? Yeah, it's a quad-core uh, A53 built on 40 nanometers. Uh, the, it has a camera interface uh, in addition to the... These boards do not have camera okay. interfaces. But this board has a camera interfaces. But these boards have 4K60 and UHD and H265 and uh, all the other video yeah. goodness. Isn't and the H series also for video? Yes, but this only supports HDMI 1.4 and HDCP 1. Point, uh, I forget. Um, oh. HDCP 1.4, so which means this is HDMI 2. Yeah, this 2A is HDMI 2. 2. Yeah, 2A. Uh, all of these support CVBS. This one has an additional microphone here, and this is uh, 100 megabit Ethernet and four separate USB channels. So, this has two separate USB channels plus a USB 3 channel. This has two USB channels, and one of them is split off to a hub. 
So this one has four separate USB channels. Um, so that's the higher end of these three? Yeah, so this is the higher end of these three. The differences between H5, H3, and our H2 board is that this comes with uh, 512 megabytes of RAM. I mean, uh, yeah, this one comes with one gig, this comes with two gigs, and this one is also 64-bit. And the prices? Uh, uh, the prices are, it's it's still in the process of being determined because... Um, uh, because component, the Kickstarter price, right? Yeah, so component prices have shot up dramatically. Oh, so. Yeah. Uh, before the SMT components used to be like two or three dollars for the board, now they're in the range of eight or nine dollars. So for the RAM, you mean? Uh, not the RAM. So RAM has increased a doubled since 2006, uh, from about two dollars to four dollars. 2006 uh, or 16? 2016. Yeah. yeah. And then the passive components. They've dramatically increased this year due to supply. There's constraint. too many people that want these things. Yeah. So all the passive components, you know, like the capacitors, resistors, and um, like the small uh, components, they've just it's astronomical how much they shot up. Some components shot up by ten folds. So before it was like a couple of cents. Now it's a couple of nickels. Um, I mean, or Is the camera and all these. Yeah, so these are using the DVP camera. So it's a parallel camera interfaces. So you can share it with uh, boards like the Orange Pi. You can use the Orange Pi cameras on these. What's the Orange Pi? Orange Pi is uh, another vendor in Shenzhen that uh, develops uh, uh, boards, uh, like really low cost boards uh, for based on all winner and numerous other uh, I I've, I've seen, I've, I've known about the banana pies. Now there's the orange pie too, and the raspberry pie. And the, you, which pie are you? Uh, I'm not a pie. Okay, you're so, not a pie. <laughs> so you're I don't want to. Uh, I, I want to stay away from pie. Your customers are free to do their own pies. That's what Libra. I'm um, joking. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the idea is that these are all open market components that you can source. So one of the issues with the Raspberry Pi Foundation is that the Broadcom SOC is not sourceable, and you have to go through um, the distributor FAEs in order to build solutions around that. And then that usually entails like a much higher cost than open market components that you can. You would think with all these Raspberry Pis they sold, they'd be pretty good with the open source stuff by now, right? Yeah. So the Broadcom chip. The Broadcom chip uh, support is good, but uh, with all ARM chips, there's binary blobs. So with the Raspberry Pi specifically, they have a Extra Jeep. blobs? Yeah, so th what happens is they actually start their CPU from the GPU. And then the, the GPU is actually a 30-bit. Uh, it can address 30 bits of the RAM. And then it's sort of it's like the coprocessor that sort of starts the main CPU. And then that entire portion uh, where the GPU starts is completely sealed off. So you don't know what happens. You can't tweak, like, so for example, you can't create your own custom camera because the firmware doesn't support it and there's no source code for it. For uh, all winner boards, the commu community basically reverse engineered all of it. So there's nothing really close. Yeah, like all of it. There's GPU no too. Uh, in, I mean, in terms of the boot yeah. stuff. So there's basically no proprietary stuff in the boot portion of these uh, three boards. So in terms of openness or libre, uh, should I say, the all winner solutions uh, based on H2, H3, and H5 are by far the most open SOCs available, like that have a decent amount of power and are low cost. Um, with these two, you still have the traditional ARM trusted firmware where a portion of it is closed off. Um, so that is unavoidable, and then we we try our best, but we can only go so far in terms of um, sort of opening these technologies. Uh, aren't um, they thinking of doing something else than, other than open the trusted firmware to have some other uh, uh, what you call it uh, a ACPI or something? Is that related? Uh, yeah. So tr it will still depend on trusted firmware because um, the trusted firmware uh, allows vendors to do things like HDCP, uh, allows vendors to do things like Widevine DRM on top of Android. So in order like, uh, our, it's a half open, half closed situation where they basically close off a uh, certain portion of the boot and the control of the SOC into a, um, like sort of in a higher execution level that uh, allows you to do secure processing of video because you know, Netflix won't let you watch 4K uh, if you don't have uh, Widevine DRM or Play Ready DRM, and all uh, the content, it's basically mandated by the content industry. To and have some secure firmware stuff. Yes, to have secure path for videos. They're afraid people are gonna what? Rip, rip 
DVDs, uh, rip the streams? Yeah, so it's basically inconvenience I mean, to the users that pay for it. Um, people are always going to be able to yeah, rip the streams. Yeah, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't block anything, it's just the convoluted way that the content industry... I don't think it's Netflix, because Netflix are smart people. I think it's the movie studios, right? Yeah, it's the content industry that mandates yeah. this, which means that Netflix has to implement it's it. It's Disney and yeah. those people. They so they, their the model stuff. hasn't exactly caught up yeah. with modern distribution. You know, like to distribute a video online yeah. nowadays does not cost that much. But they all um, get a really good driver now from, uh, from provided by ARM for the Mali stuff. Yeah, so is we. Is Molly here too? I, Four, I, 400 or which one? Yeah, so this is this is Molly 450, 450, uh, 400, and 400. So they're based on the art card generation from a couple years ago. Uh, there's an open source effort by some people to um, to basically reverse engineer that Molly driver to build the open source version, but that's still like quite a bit away. But there is a community effort there, there around that. There was a new thing right recently, right? Uh, there yes. was a Lima, but now there's something else. Uh, uh, there's the name of it. So there's Lima for H. Um, there's Lima for uh, Molly Utgard, so the 4X. There's Tamali for or Tamil for. Uh, uh, the Midgard generation, which is the uh, Mali 7X and 8X and 6X. And then you have the Bitfrost, the latest stuff. Um, so this is based on the Mali 4X, which um, is still not open by ARM, even though the GPU is kind of like old by modern standards. Um, yes. power but the power consumption of these compared to that one? This is a king or is this also very good with power? So we, so these are, uh, they have a fixed voltage regulator, so some all winner solutions they have a adjustable voltage on the SOCs. But I think all winner is moving away from that model to a fixed one because you have issues of like the implementation being different and causing all kinds of overheating issues. Uh, we've locked these to one gigahertz, um, or they go up to one gigahertz, but the voltage is locked at 1.1 volt and 1.2 volts for these. Um, this is like the most stable and verified setting. And it, because we want these development boards to be reliable platforms for development, we don't want people to be advertising these as 1.2 gigahertz as, or 1.3 gigahertz as some people advertise, or, or even to the extreme uh, and 1.5 gigahertz because these chips are 40 nanometer and just flat out will not run that. And what's the nanometer in these? These are 28 nanometer. So the power consumption is slight, uh, slightly higher on these uh, compared to these two. But not significant enough because we limit the clock rates. So these run at this runs at 1.4, this runs at 1.5, and these are locked in at like or top, at the top end at one gigahertz. But you were talking about the power consumption here. Yeah. So this is the that you was can love quite low, huh? But how about these the power consumption? Uh, you can get them to about one point something watt uh, if you turn a uh, majority of the. Uh, components so again any 1a power bank or chargers okay yeah so at the top end this might this one might consume a little bit more power um, but but these two are similar because of the clock speed differences um, because this has an extra 40 percent more performance at the 1.4 gigahertz than this has at one, one gigahertz it's not so, the ddr4 over here right so that one yeah so this DDR. one's ddr4 ddr3 and ddr3 so this ddr3 is much higher performance than these uh ddr3 chips because uh this can only go up to around uh 30, 1300 megahertz for the ddr frequency this one can go to 2130 uh, what were the prices on Kickstarter for these three? So this one was nine dollars. Uh, nine. Yes. So it, I mean, it costs us a lot more to build it. So it costs us in the range of twenty dollars to build this. So you're like giving away eleven dollars to people. I mean, yeah. So hardware doesn't really. Um, so yeah, these are development boards. So they're like. How many people bought this one? Or that one? We one? I forget the numbers, but we have around one point five k of inventory booked. So we of manufactured. Yeah. So we manufactured. 2.5k um, nice. but like the cost the hardware is sold below cost um, uh, we even like pay for some upstream support along with um, we also support open source companies I mean projects uh, teams in across the world uh, oh, you do that too yeah so we give away free hardware also we sponsor some projects um, like for example RMB and or upstreaming specific components we we spend we actually spend money on doing that and that the money we spent on software exceeds the amount of um kickstarter funds that we raised so we're basically giving like if we gave away 
we basically gave them away more software than hardware mm. at this point. But this is a, a, a love of mine. So, we've been so you're doing. a philanthropist. <laughs> Something like that. So. It's a, how about this uh, Masayoshi son? He should be like, uh, or all winner or rock chip or am logic are they what are they doing to help you uh not much they're giving you the chips right uh, as many you want you just buy them from them i don't buy from them i buy from resellers but oh, yeah. um uh right now this is like i have a vision of where computing is going and uh these are just sort of the baby steps to get there so when, when did you start all this stuff this why did you come over here so shenzhen so Shenzhen is a fun place because it's where all like makers sort of this is the heaven of makers um, You can buy any components for really really cheap here um, Like and you can build your idea from scratch. Uh, How long have you been coming here? I've been coming here for about a year and a half and then uh, So this is a new Libra computer is new? Yes, so this is a very new project so that was like last year and this is now or yeah so this of? was uh we started fundraising i think in uh september of last year and then start delivered these to kickstarter backers so and then, like six six months yeah six so six months ago you started yeah so this one was a cooperative effort between me and another i mean my company organization and another company called t-chip which manufactures uh this board and then they've been they have a open source initiative as well and then we partner with the t firefly guys right yeah that's the t firefly yeah. guys and they're really cool guys as well and yeah. they manufacture a lot of different solutions for uh consumers they have and some 3399 stuff going on somewhere. yes they yeah. have a lot of stuff that's very with type c you're not doing any type c yet so we have an entire roadmap of products coming in 2018 and 2019 oh, yeah? yeah and they're going to be really innovative computing concepts uh these are sort of just uh, testing the waters this yeah. uh, you're just getting started basically yes this is getting started okay. so <laughs> so i think we we've done a pretty good job getting started um although we did the kickstarter uh rewards for these were slightly delayed and we do apologize to the backers for that yeah. but so sorry so sorry so sorry but we're working so out 1, various 500 they'll get them don't worry right? yeah you'll, you'll get them just uh we're resolving all sorts of different logistical issues um but you'll get them and um you'll get them at a very good discount so you're getting them at a very good discount. nine dollars yeah nine dollars is, is uh basically is cheaper than a coffee over here when starbucks <laughs> okay just yeah. to say it's yeah. a, it's like a third the price of a pizza hut pizza yeah. so don't worry and then this one, the price was around the... Uh, this one was 19 this was 29 So this board currently costs around $40, 35 to $40 to build. This one costs around, uh, uh, I think it's $10, uh, not $10, like $6 less. So like 30 some dollars. And this one costs like 20 some dollars to build. Uh, but once the volume kicks in, um, the prices can start going down on these nice. components. I think it'd be so cool. Like uh, I don't know what you. I, I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we're still filming, but mm -hmm. I think it'd be cool if sometime in the future there'll be just a Type C and that's it. Yeah. And so it'll be as compact as possible. Just the chip, the Type C. Yes. So we have solutions like that in the works. Um, uh, it'll be here in a couple months. Uh, so we just want to redo the whole computer and uh, micro server concepts nice. because we have a sort of a vision of where that industry is headed including like cloud and all that other funny business oh, yeah. with computing so uh, we hope to apply computing everywhere and then we also have smaller boards uh, coming to you soon that are much lower power and uh, much lower cost that you can use for IoT like true IoT solutions and you, you didn't want to uh, do the the 96 boards because they, they don't they don't allow for so many USBs and stuff and this different size and what do you think about the 96 boards? Uh, Lenaro, so Lenaro's 96 boards they've done a lot of innovative stuff for um, uh, like the silicone manufacturers. So we're on the consumer end. So the target market and the product is very differentiated from what they're targeting. Um, that's why we didn't choose their sort of standard for uh, doing this. But the, the, Lenaro does a lot of good work for the higher end, like for example, Hikey and Hikey 960 and the upcoming 970 and the 
or K3399 uh, boards. And you just said that the, that it kind of like maybe helped a little bit in terms of the Mali drivers? This high key board, right? So, yeah, so the high key board really helped in terms of the Mali drivers are getting armed to push out the Mali drivers. It's a big uh, deal, no? Yeah, it is a big deal because uh, without that, you can't run like, you know, Wayland, which is the upcoming like uh, sort of display. Uh, protocols uh, of the future. So X11 is on its way out and I think uh, Ubuntu 18.04 was released today and with that comes support of Wayland. I know they backtracked on Wayland uh, from 17.10 but we're really interested because Wayland allows us to use OpenGL ES to expose uh, critical features of the board and allow these boards to really shine uh, because of the Wayland dis display protocol and we're really really excited for that um, so how many people in the world are there buying development boards and are, are there a bunch of people doing business with them like they buy them and they put them in like uh, 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 what do you call those uh, digital signage or some other kind of like commercial things yeah so how, that's how many of your customers are, are either like tinkering or uh, doing business so we're mostly focused on the tinkers because uh, we want to have this product lineup completed before we do volume production. So volume production is on the order of like 50k uh, a month. Uh, so we're we should start that in Q3. We should have or we should we will have mass manufacturing uh, done by Q3 of this year. Um, so that people who will want to integrate these products with um, uh, various applications can do so then. We also are preparing various software elements like for example putting the device trees of these products and doing overlays and doing all of the software legwork in order to have a easy experience building your IoT or building your edge product or building your core NAS or whatever other products that you, or applications that you may be interested in. So uh, look for uh, global availability in Q3 uh, along with global distribution in Q3 for all of these products that you see here. And Microsoft definitely needs to wake up to this, right? Who? Microsoft. So, mm -hmm. how about they join the open source movement and stuff and do uh, do some open source windows or whatever? Uh, they did their IoT thing, but I think they're giving up on that IoT concepts. And it was and not open source, was it? Uh, windows IoT. I, I, I don't recollect, but uh, I think they, they've embraced Linux with a Zero Sphere OS and I think um, if Microsoft properly embrace Linux... That'd be cool, right? That'd be cool, that'd be cool. That'd so be Microsoft, cool. hey, come over here. <laughs> come, yes. uh, or just uh, your logo or something. Maybe yeah. you could use some of their, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 philanthropy funds. <laughs> uh, hey, Bill Gates. Or, well, I'm just joking. Yeah. You, you don't need, you're fine. I mean, you, you're gonna you're gonna expand, you're gonna take over the world with small computers and a new vision. Yeah, so we're... And we're, uh, everything is happening here in Shenzhen. So, yeah, so money is not really the end object of this. It's the uh, reimagining of the concept of computers. And then uh, Raspberry Pi, a wonderful organization, has sort of lit the flames for that. And uh, we want to continue to sort of bring openness and um, sort of more freedom but to this market and let people apply computing everywhere that's possible. And these ARM SOCs are getting much more interesting with MPUs and other um, um, cool technology getting built into SOCs. And we look forward to integrating those into products and allowing people to sort of do all kinds of cool stuff with video, with signal processing, with various applications that they have in mind. Um, and, and being and powerful build. enough to run a desktop experience that's nice. Yeah, so for the, even like most consumers should think, feel, hopefully, that uh, using one of these, it feels like, hey, that's cool enough. I'm good enough for that. Like, it's powerful enough for me. I can do all my basic stuff. Yes, I'm actually worried about traditional vendors. So the moment ARM comes out with a uh, octa-core ARM Cortex A75, or one of the IC vendors come out with a octa-core Cortex A75, Intel and AMD are in a lot of trouble. So um, AMD abandoned their K12 uh, initiative uh, for, and they're going for the enterprise, which I think x86 is going to be uh, in the long term. They have to stick with enterprise because that's where their margins are. But ARM is really making a killing on the sort of low end and medium desktops. I don't see um, uh, sort of x86 
having a future in laptops and desktops, like in like moderate level desktops. I still see them in high end desktops, but I think ARM is gonna make a uh, real, real uh, inroads into the computer market. And uh, there was this, there's this really cool uh, French company mm -hmm. uh, that does this cloud, uh, cloud access to a giant C on server. Just so if you have, this is could be considered also thin clients where you get access to unlimited computing on the cloud mm -hmm. that are that is feels like it's local. Yes. So something like this should be powerful enough to be a very smooth thin client. And think, even with more than thin client, but just like a thin, uh, it, it should be perfect for a thin client. Yeah, exactly. So these uh, these have so many applications. I, mean, I can't even start to begin like where you can start applying these in places. So uh, in the cloud, as thin clients, as digital signage, as IoT devices, um, as servers. You know, if you have like a sub a one watt computer, you know, you can make turn that into a mini server. If you have a cluster of them, you can test your Kubernetes or whatever <coughs> projects that you're testing, and it becomes very, very interesting for very, very low cost. Like uh, one computer that you buy, you can buy. Uh, let's see, if if you buy the uh, two gig by two gigabyte version of this, you can buy uh, what is it, twenty of these to build a cluster for one grand, which you just couldn't do before. You can't build twenty a twenty computer cluster before for that much money and if you apply these on a server level like basically build multiples of these boards onto a single board then you're talking like you know revolutionary cost structures that you know traditional x86 just simply doesn't have a chance at those price ranges um, but it does require software innovations and orchestration innovations and algorithms that uh, are able to that are distributed and cope with uh, issues like consensus um, in the software world. So uh, after the Raspberry Pi, which is kind of like the leader still, right? What's, mm -hmm. Who's number two and three and four and so I, in the I, development I, board business the, market? I don't worry too much about that. So I don't like. I think Raspberry Pi sold something like five million. You think uh, total? Uh, no, no, no. Last year. Last year only. Yeah. yeah. So between their Pi uh, Model B and Pi Zero. I think they probably sold around five million units, uh, but that's just that's like Raspberry Pi. Although in the development world, I mean development board world, they're big. I think that the market, like uh, SoftBank says, is a trillion. Yes, it's a trillion that really matter, and we're not even close to scratching the surface yet. Nice. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. cool, and maybe in some point there will be flexible part uh, uh, motherboards. Flexible PCBs, yeah, uh, flexible chips. Yeah, your computing will be everywhere. You won't even be able to see it, but it will be there. So, are you interested in the Cortex M space, the embedded? This is, uh, we're smaller not smaller ones. We're not doing MCUs yet. We have considered doing MCUs, um, but I think uh, given like how small the Cortex A uh, thirty five can be, I think it's going to get real interesting real soon uh, within the next two years in the ARM world for uh, substituting uh, M class MCUs, like Cortex M class uh, MCUs with Cortex A class uh, CPU uh, or CPUs, like general purpose CPUs. Because uh, in the Western market, in, in the Chinese market, everybody optimizes for costs. In the Western market, the costs are in the uh, sort of the labor of doing the software. And there's not enough embedded people in uh, America and Europe to satisfy the needs for the applications and um, once you give them like something that runs Debian or Ubuntu uh, they're just going to take off with that uh, and build all kinds of cool new products and maybe down the line it'll get optimized but initially for low volume production of like say 10k or less definitely these these boards are the way to go because they expose all the functionality of the chips and uh, the cost, the cost is very low for what you're getting um, because of economies of scale. 
Nice. So we're really looking forward to next what you're going to do next, and that's going to be interesting. Cool. Uh, there's going to be some news on your websites and your your channels and everywhere. Libre Computer. Yeah. So we have a whole pipeline of products coming this year. Um, just I guess wait on Twitter and see it, and then back nice. our Kickstarters because they're really where you're going to get everything for cheap. You like cheap. Kickstarter? Is good. Uh, we we just use it as a marketing tool. Pers uh, how many pers commission? How much commission does Kickstarter take? Is it eight percent in total or something? They take mm, uh, around nine point five percent. Nine point five percent. That's yeah. including the credit card fee and everything. Yes. So they That's take five percent plus the credit card processing, which usually for low cost things like a nine dollar entire bill, you know, you have thirty cents of overhead plus three percent. You wouldn't want to crowdfund on your own website instead and save those. Five, six, seven percent compared to Kickstarter. It's already done at a loss. So, okay. we're uh, in the, the bigger picture. You know, between um, between that amount is trivial compared to the marketing yes. exposure or something. Yes. So we're not too concerned about the costs. Uh, and it's just been know. successful every time. Yeah. In the sec satisfactory manner. So, yeah, we've been building the hardware. Basically, when we're completed and ready for mass manufacturing, uh, that's when we sort of do the Kickstarter. Um, although, like, we can go to mass manufacturing without it, but it's just uh, allows us to see gauge what people's perceptions are. There's not too much weight, usually. Yes. Except uh, sometimes, but not. Yeah, so much. this one, this, uh, there was some logistical issues and sourcing issues, but um, okay. and then also component shortages. But uh, that's been resolved, and the whole production for Kickstarter has been completed. But uh, we shouldn't be running into any of that once volume production. That was started. how long time ago the, the Kickstarter on this one? So this was uh, for a 60 day Kickstarter. So our delivery date was actually before we received the money. So yeah. when um, was it supposed? So it was supposed to be at the end of January. So we originally wanted to ship at the end of January and uh, get delivered in February. But what happens is it's Chinese New Year's, uh, we sort of didn't make proper preparations for it. And then uh, some of our manufacturing, I mean, some of our manufacturing partners actually didn't have the parts that they said they had. And then it resulted in some delays and we have to completely resource some, uh, some items and then sort of go through that production process again. Um, which is, which happens, you know. I but, think they should just cancel Chinese New Year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's like... the only holiday they have, but why not just cancel that one? Yeah, so it's like 15, it's, the, the workers go off for a month, so all the factory close about 15 days before and 15 days after. Um, so basically from the middle of March, I mean, middle of January to the middle of March, don't expect to get anything <laughs> done. Nice. Uh, that for other Kickstarters, or if you're actually developing a, a new product, I would recommend that you know you, you avoid this time of year. Um, nice. Wait, cool. set delivery dates after uh, March. Cool. All right. So, looking forward to what you're gonna get here in the future uh, from out of Shenzhen. All right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thank for you so much.